uh, I will um, invite uh, the, our next speaker. And our next speaker is uh, Oksana Yakimova from uh, Friedrich Schiller Universität Jena, Germany. And her talk is um, Symmetrization and the Feigen Frankel Center. You are welcome. Okay, we see your presentation. Please start when you, you are ready. I'm ready, sorry, I had some problem with my microphone. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers for giving me an opportunity to speak. It was a wonderful and significant conference. And also I would like to start my talk, which is based on this published paper, with some words, very few words in my mother's language, which is Ukrainian. Um, here's a translation into English of what I'm going to say. So, Ukrainian mathematics, who are working in Ukraine, and those who have come to the border, are called my sincere excitement and spirituality. At this wonderful time, they continue to work, training students, obtaining new results, writing studies, conducting conferences. Українці з величезною мужністю захищають свою країну та свободу. Українські науковці, так само, як взагалі народ України, заслуговують аль, усю потрібну допомогу. Я надіюся, сподіваюся, що розуміння в світі того, що зараз відбувається в Україні, буде зростати, і разом з цим буде зростати світова допомога. Але ми повернемося до математики, and I'll switch back to English. So first we fix a setup for this talk. The ground field is the field of complex numbers. G is a reductive Lie algebra, which is a Lie algebra of a group. I will assume that the group is connected. And uh, so main objects of the talk are universal enveloping algebra, its center, and the algebra of symmetric invariants. So this is the algebra of G invariant regular functions on the dual space of G. They are isomorphic as algebras in the reductive case, and actually they are isomorphic also in the non-reductive but finite dimensional case. So this, this object is called the algebra of symmetric invariants. There is also a well-known theorem of Chevalier, restriction theorem, that if we choose a Cartan subalgebra in G, and G and G dual are isomorphic as G monons, then we can restrict symmetric invariance to the Cartan subalgebra and we obtain exactly the invariance of a Weyl group. And the Weyl group happens to be a finite reflection group. So the ring of symmetric uh, invariance is a polynomial ring in L generators where L is the rank of G. In one very important and very easy to describe case of GLN, we can write this invariance very explicitly, generating invariance via just coefficients of a characteristic polynomial. For other classical Lie algebras, uh, there are also descriptions for the generators of a symmetric invariance. In the exceptional case, the description is not so transparent. And of course, there are other sets of generators. So here for this talk, we fix with delta one until delta n as coefficients of a characteristic polynomial. There are also other choices for the generators of the symmetric invariance. So another important object of this talk is the symmetrization map. So this is defined for any vector space as a map from a symmetric case symmetric power of V to the case tensor power of V that obtain symmetric tensors. And for any Lie algebra, the symmetrization map pi uh, gives us a map uh, from a symmetric algebra uh, to the enveloping algebra. It is an isomorphism of Kiev models, and it defines an isomorphism of vector spaces between symmetric invariants of Q, so elements of a symmetric algebra which are annihilated by the action of Q, and the center of enveloping algebra. So the isomorphisms, uh, isomorphic is vector spaces. Uh, symmetrization map is not an isomorphism of algebras, but it's also well-defined for infinite dimensional algebras. 
And here on the next slide, we already see one infinite dimensional Lie algebra, namely the current algebra associated with G. And I can truncate this current algebra and obtain the so called Takifli algebra modeled on G. This algebra is no longer reductive if n is larger than 1. But it turns out that its symmetric invariance can be described. This is a result of Reyes and Tuvel. We obtained an explicit description of the symmetric invariance. We will see the, a version of this description, which is important in the infinite dimensional case. Right. So uh, this is a bit technical. Now I'm considering the loop algebra associated with G. So now we have here T and T inverse. And inside it, I take the negative part of the loop algebra. You can say this is just a negative current algebra without the zero component. So this is G hat minus. I consider it as a vector space as a quotient of the loop algebra by the positive current algebra, non negative current algebra. And inside symmetric algebra of this quotient or of this vector space, I would like to consider the invariance of a non negative part of the current algebra. So the polynomials in T, they act on this quotient. So they act on this magic algebra, and it's possible to consider the invariance. So just all functions such that if we apply an element from a positive part, non negative part of a current algebra, it's zero in the quotient. So we end up in this ideal. It turns out it follows from the result of Raiz and Tovel that this ring is also a polynomial ring, but it has infinitely many generators. And it has um, a direct limit structure. So we can take finite pieces um, of this negative part of the loop algebra in the quotient. So we still consider them in the quotient. So the non negative part acts here. We can take symmetric algebra of this vector space the invariance of non-negative part of the loop algebra. And then our polynomial ring with infinitely many generators is direct limit of this finitely generated rings of invariance. And because we can describe, due to Raiz and Tavel, generators for each finite dimensional piece, we can describe generators in the direct limit. And another very important feature of this algebra, that hit, uh, that bar of G hat, is that it's a Poisson commutative subalgebra of a symmetric algebra. So I will recall what is a Poisson bracket of symmetric algebra of Lie algebra on the next slide. There are several possible definitions, we recall two of them. So for the elements of Lie algebra itself, it's enough just to take the Lie bracket. So the Poisson bracket and the Lie bracket are the same. And then we can extend it to the symmetric algebra using the Leibniz rule. Or we can take the commutator in the enveloping algebra. And uh, recall that the symmetric algebra is the associated gradient of the enveloping algebra of Q by the Poincare of Witt theorem. So the commutator on the enveloping algebra leads to a Poisson bracket on the associated algebra, associated graded algebra in the natural and canonical way. So two definitions and well, also in these terms, we can say that the algebra of symmetric invariance of Q is the so-called Poisson center of a symmetric algebra. So instead of taking invariance of group of Lie algebra, we can take Elements such that a Poisson bracket with all elements from Q or all elements from mathematic algebra vanishes. So it's zero. Uh, I have already said what Poisson commutative means that the Poisson bracket vanishes. So symmetric algebra is commutative with respect to multiplication, but there is additional structure with Poisson structure. And Poisson commutative is with respect to this additional Poisson structure and it means just the bracket vanishes. So because the Poisson bracket comes from the commutator in the enveloping algebra, we have here two directions. 
So first we can start from something commutative in U of Q. Uh, take the so-called graded image of this algebra. This is a linear span of all symbols of elements belonging to C. And this algebra will be partial commutative. It follows from our second definition. And we can try to go in a different direction, start with something Poisson commutative in the symmetric algebra, and ask a question if this subalgebra comes from something commutative in the enveloping algebra. So this going in the different direction, in the opposite direction, is called the quantization problem. It's not so obvious that it's possible. No, that's why a problem. Uh, this is a most, more or less obvious statement. And this is, in most cases, is not obvious at all if such a commutative subalgebra exists or not. But if it exists, it, uh, its existence leads to some nice and important applications. So from the title of my talk, the Fagin Friendly Center, what is it? Well, it's a quantization, actually the quantization, because it's unique, of our subalgebra, Z bar of G hat. Or rather, well, here yeah, I give kind of a definition of this. It's a large and significant commutative subalgebra in the enveloping algebra of a negative part of the loop algebra. And it also consists of G invariants, G Lie algebra or the group. So the existence of such subalgebra, which quantized that bar of G hat, was proven by Maris Fagan and Eduard Frankel. Uh, that's why the name Fagan Frankel Center. And well, rough definition, more or less the same as in the classical Poisson case. We take the enveloping algebra and take here the invariance of a non negative part of a loop algebra. But we have to understand this action rather carefully uh, because, well, there is no obvious action. So the action is, is on a certain quotient. And this quotient is taken at a certain quote critical level. So we take a one-dimensional extension of the loop algebra, to, uh, take here in the enveloping algebra a two-sided ideal generated by the non-negative part. And also we set the value of k as a number minus uh, h check, where h check is the dual coxeter number of t. And also we have to normalize the commutator in a very precise way in order to have all these things correct. So this is a killing form divided by the two times the dual coxeter number. So this is a critical level and this is a very unique uh, level, I can say for representation of uh, Katz-Moody algebra. So at this level there is a huge center of a completed enveloping algebra of a Katz-Moody algebra. Or we can say that there is a huge commutative algebra in this quotient. So the reason for commutativity is uh, that the quotient is a vertex algebra and this Z of G hat is the center of this vertex algebra. So the commutator with itself is zero. Well, as I already mentioned, there is also a completed in low open algebra of a Katsumoji algebra, completed at a critical level. Uh, it has a huge center and actually this, uh, this small huge center and the usual huge center where isomorphic and one can go from one to another using the vertex algebra technique. Uh, this is one feature of this object. Uh, another one is that we can obtain from this commutative subalgebra many other commutative subalgebras in the quotients of uh, loop algebra. So for some finite dimensional Lie algebras, in particular for G itself. And in this way, one obtains solutions of uh, several quantization problems. Uh, so in the Gaudin model and also for so-called mission performance of algebras. Have something uh, commutative and huge in the Katz-Moody Lie algebra and from Open algebra, that's Moodley algebra, and from it, uh, we can go back to U of G in several different ways and obtain something commutative. 
Perfect. Any uh, questions or comments at this point? Doesn't seem to be the case. So I'll continue and say a few words about the structure of Fagin Friendly Center. So it's again a polynomial ring and it has infinitely many generators. Uh, there are some uh, distinct important generators where are just eight of them. It is the rank of G, the dimension of a Q-tans algebra, and all the others are obtained as iterated partial derivatives with respect to T of them. So this set is called a complete set of Siegel Sugawara vectors. And what we can say about this elements S1 until SA, well, we can actually describe the symbols. So that's the need for evaluation map. We just replace T with one. So this is the map from uh, G in the degree minus one, just means G times T inverse. So G just replace T by one. It was evaluation at one. It's an isomorphism of G models, and we can go back. We can take an element in S of G and let F uh, with minus one in brackets stands for the pre image of F here in the symmetric algebra of G minus one. So we just replace all variables by the same variables multiplied by T inverse. So uh, the symbols of this is K. Um, they will be the elements hk in degree minus one, where h1 until ha is any set is a set of generators for the symmetric invariance of G. And we can go in the opposite direction. So we can take any set of generators here for the symmetric algebra. There are several of them. We can shift them to the degree minus one. And then iterated partial derivatives with respect to T of this shifted generating invariance will be generators on the classical level for this uh, Poisson commutative subalgebra for the invariance in the symmetric algebra. And well, we can symmetrize them. And this will be the leading component of uh, SK. But there are some other components. Of, so to say, in the components of filtration with smaller indices. And uh, these other components, uh, in general, for exceptionally algebras, will remain rather mysterious until this day. So, explicit description of the generators of a Fagin friendly center is available for the classically algebras, but it remains uh, a mystery for the exceptionally algebras. So, we can just tell about the component. The leading component and um, well, the other summons uh, remain quite unknown. But there is one element which is easy to describe. It's related to the quadratic Casimir. So we just take uh, some non-degenerate scalar product of G, choose an orthonormal basis, shift all our variables to the degree minus one and define a function in this way. So uh, this element in the symmetric algebra belong to the Z bar of T hat. And if you consider it as an element of the enveloping algebra, it belongs to the Fagin friendly center. And by a very important result with many applications of Leonid Trebnikov, we can describe the Fagin friendly center as the centralizer of a single element. So we don't even need cuts moduli algebras or complicated constructions of vertex algebra. All we need is a current algebra rather its negative part, one element in this current algebra and when the Fagin friendly center in its small version is just the centralizer of our single element. So this does not tell you that the centralizer is commutative, but it tells us already quite a lot about it. For, for example, it implies that the quantization is unique. The quantization of Z bar of G hat. Right, so to the explicit formulas, first they appeared in type A. 
Uh, so we need uh, some more notation. I will denote the minus partial derivatives on T as tau. And we use the following convention that the commutator with tau is just differential operator applied to an element and how you apply the differential operator. Multiply it by minus A and shift the degree by minus one. And uh, another convention is with T applied to one is zero. So if we differentiate one, we get zero. So for example, the expression tau x in the degree minus one applied to one. So if we take here the commutator and uh, we'll obtain x to the degree minus two uh, plus x in the degree minus one times tau applied to one, which is zero. So this is how you commute and uh, tau and an element from Gatz Moody algebra. And in this way, we can get rid of a differential operator later on. Uh, so what was the discovery of chervov talalay first? But uh, one can build, well, it wasn't the discovery, one can build a huge matrix. So we take the matrix units of G and N, shift them to the degree minus one, and uh, add the identity matrix multiplied by this differential operator. So this is an N by N matrix. And entries, well, they're in the extension of the katz moody algebra but with, by this differential operator. One can uh, calculate um, column or symmetrized determinant of this matrix because the entries uh, they belong to a non-commutative algebra. The determinant, the usual determinant doesn't make sense. But the nice thing about this matrix, it's so-called Manian matrix, so symmetrized and column determinant are going to be the same. All right, so we calculate uh, this determinant and we consider the coefficients of tau in this expression and the coefficients of tau, they are exactly, of the powers of tau, they are exactly the elements S1 until Sn, the Segal Sugawara vectors. Right, so from this recipe of Chirov and Talalayev, after several uh, modifications, uh, we obtain the following formula in type A for uh, generators of the Fagin friendly center. So these are coefficients of a characteristic polynomial, which we have already seen. This is the symmetrization map. And then, well, some binomial coefficients. And in uh, here, when I symmetrize, I mix the differential operator and elements of the Katz algebra. Okay, so the symmetrization map. Uh, this is an expression of degree k, so to say. It has uh, two r elements that are differential operators, and it has k minus two r elements belonging to the Katz-Moody algebra. This is not the original form, as I mentioned here. One has to modify it, so the symmetrization map wasn't used before. And also of some importance that um, the powers, the degrees of the invariance here, they all of the same parity. So let's jump by two. And then a natural question would be, is there any connection between delta k and delta k minus two? Yes, there is one connection. You can use a Laplacian operator to get from one to another, but this doesn't help. But there is another connection. There is a certain map M, linear map M, which does help to see how to get from delta k to delta k minus two. Okay, so this is a linear map. It looks a bit like convolution. So first I define it on the case uh, tensor power of G, my Lie algebra, reductive Lie algebra, no, any, actually any algebra, not necessarily reductive. So it's a linear map and on a pure tensor, we just take a product of uh, a joint action of the first three elements. So this is element of G and G, endomorphism of G, and the remaining, remaining elements, they stay as they are in the tensor product. Okay, so this is such a linear map. Well, we can observe that if, oh, this is a misprint, this should have been three. If I interchange the first and the last factors of a product when the sum is uh, an element uh, of, um, of S of T, which is isomorphic to the second exterior power of T. 
And well, when I embed the symmetric case power of G into case tensor products via the symmetrization map, and so we obtained from map of M to do a map M from the case symmetric power of G to the tensor product. Second exterior power of G and well, it will be in the K minus three symmetric power of G. Well, for some elements, uh, here's an example how it works if uh, k is equal to three, if k is smaller or equal to than two or equal to two, then m is just zero. And uh, for some invariants, there are certain elements, even some invariant elements, such that the image of m of them uh, lies in the tensor product of g and the k minus three symmetric power of g. So g is embedded into s of g. There is a unique copy. And if this happens for H, then we can iterate the map M. So when M squared of H makes sense. And if M squared of H is again a symmetric invariant, then we can iterate the map M once again. Uh, so it doesn't have only to be here, it has to be a symmetric invariant in order to iterate M. Right. So we first, I promised you a connection between delta k and delta k minus two. So for convenience, we work with SLN, but the elements are the same, they are coefficients of a characteristic polynomial. And then up to a certain coefficient, uh, MR of delta k, uh, twiddle because it's for SLN, is delta k minus two R. So in particular, M of delta k twiddle is delta k minus two twiddle up to a scale. And using this, we can rewrite our formula for the elements SK, well, from GLN to SLN again, but now using the map M. So H is delta K twiddle, but here I'm using H, right? My, my symmetric environment, my fixed symmetric environment. And I use the images of this iteration of the map M. So this formula just depends on H, well, tor and symmetrization map. And it turns out uh, that this formula is actually kind of type three. So if we can find a symmetric invariant such that all iterated maps, images with respect to M of H are symmetric invariant, uh, then we can insert it into the formula and obtain an element from the Fagan friendly center. And the nice thing about this map M, that such generating invariants satisfying this condition, they exist for all classical Lie algebras. We have here another result. So for some elements, it's possible just to take the symmetrization of the shifts to the degree minus one, and they will be elements of the Fagan friendly center. This happens if and only if the image of F under M is zero. And there are some invariants satisfying this stronger, much stronger condition, not many of them, but for example, the Pathian in the even dimensional symmetric, for the even dimensional symmetric algebra, orthogonal algebra satisfies this condition. So uh, there are generators uh, for all classical Lie algebras, such that M of them is again uh, in this set of generators. So for sp2n, they again take coefficients of a characteristic polynomial. And for the orthogonal the algebra, well, it's a bit different. So we have to take the determinant of the inverse of this difference. So multiply the matrix from s n by q, identity matrix minus this product in the determinant of the inverse pro uh, product. Inverse matrix is a power series in q. Uh, only um, even powers appear and all these coefficients are actually symmetric invariants. And up to n, they're generating symmetric invariants with an addition of a Pathian. So they're all very nice with respect to the map M. So one obtains explicit formulas for the generators, uh, for the single pseudo-valid vectors for the generators of the Hagen friendly center using the elements delta k and cn or with elements phi, 2k, with the addition of a Pathian. For the algebra. Right, so in conclusion, there are still several open uh, questions uh, related to this construction, the map M in particular. For the exceptional Lie algebras, uh, it's still open if nice invariants always exist. 
So thank you very much for your attention. Jack